G'day everyone, welcome to an old Cyclone Chasers Cyclone video update today, the 16th of February 2015. This is a national public update. We have two tropical lows we're watching. We have one tropical low here called 95P and we have one tropical low here called 98P. Now 98P is expected to move eastwards and then southwards back towards the Queensland coast. Whether or not it makes landfall around the Capricornia to southeast coast district, we don't know yet. Uh, there is a little bit of model disagreement on that, but overall the track forecast uh, is fairly agreeable between all computer models. A stronger system is likely to maintain a, a track off the coast, a weaker system is likely to whack into the coast. Now with this particular tropical low there is also a little bit of disagreement here, but the general consensus of computer models is that it's going to smash into the northeastern parts of the Northern Territory and then continue in this west or west southwesterly direction into NT and WA. There is an alternative scenario of course uh, there always is with these things the alternative scenario for this particular system is for it to remain very weak and track back into the peninsula and off the coast of NT uh, off the coast of North Queensland and eventually hit the coast of North Queensland as a weak low so that is the alternative scenario obviously the scenario of most interest to us at Oz Cyclone Chasers is this one to the west because this system could actually become a significant tropical cyclone uh, this one here is more likely to be a low by the time it hits the coast. Remember, of course, as we mentioned, if it remains a stronger system, it's more likely to stay off the coast. So if it remains a tropical cyclone in the Cat 2 to 5 range, it would be a, a system that would remain off the coast. If it's a Cat 1 or a uh, tropical low, or even a subtropical low by that stage, it gets close to southeast Queensland, it would be more likely to hit the coast. Time frames, time frames for all this happening. Uh, probably a, a landfall in NT would be somewhere between uh, Tuesday night and Thursday, and a landfall in southeast Queensland would be somewhere between Thursday and Saturday at this stage, is what we're looking at. Anyway, that's the overview. Let's go into this a little bit more detail. Thanks to weatherzone.com.au, you can see here on the infrared we actually have a tropical low located out here well to the west of WA. Don't stress WANs, that's not coming towards you. Uh, that will remain well offshore and push to the west. You might get some of this high cloud streaming off it, that's because of the wind shear that's associated with the system. Further to the north here we can see very active monsoonal surge at the moment pushing through the northern coral sea and also the Arafura sea. That's associated with that tropical low there and the tropical low out here. There's also another weak system possibly just off your uh, off your charts here out towards Vanuatu. Now that is a, you know not expected to come our way uh, and if it does so it's going to be that weak it's probably not even going to be a trough by the time it gets into the coral sea so it's really going to struggle. Really folks the big thing is this low here for southeast Queensland that, that you need to watch and obviously the biggest one is this one here over the northeast parts of the territory. So let's take a look at some track forecasts here. You can see this one here, 95P, a real significant system possible here according to the UK Met model, has a Category 3 or 4 tropical cyclone making landfall around the northeast parts of the Territory and then pushing in a southwesterly direction. With landfall occurring sometime on the 19th to the 20th of Feb. The GFS2 having a landfall up here on the north coast of the NT and we can see here category 1 or 2 tropical cyclone at the point of landfall. Uh, more likely probably a weekend category 2 according to the computer guidance. And then tracking to the west and then possibly redeveloping in the longer term out here off the coast of Broome as a 1 or 2 again and hitting the coast again. So that's the long term GFS but overall the, the general GFS modelling suggesting here a westerly motion of an intensifying category 1 or 2 tropical cyclone by the time it makes landfall. The reason the GFS doesn't intensify it as quickly, it doesn't have as much time over water. So therefore we're seeing here a, a landfall here on the 18th of Feb. So we're looking at a landfall around Wednesday morning as opposed to Thursday Friday. There's always going to be alternatives, it's just a matter of deciding whether the alternatives are valid or not. And what we can see here is that the system is expected to lie uh, around about uh, west of or northwest of Weeper here, not expected to move too much further to the west at this stage, and then push directly back to the southeast, south, and then southwest across the uh, across the Gulf of Carpentaria. Look, this is a low probability scenario, but it is a probability that needs to be mentioned nonetheless. We can see that solution or, or an element of that solution being verified too by the European model where we see a tropical low or, or possibly a tropical cyclone, fairly lopsided system here with gales to its north but no gales to the south. 
uh, eventually pushing back to the east and back over the peninsula of, of Queensland. And you can see it getting out to the Coral Sea again out here just off the north of there of Princess Charlotte Bay and then continuing further to the southeast and then eventually washing out right off the coast here of Cairns or between Cairns and Innisfail. Now, con conversely to what you might be thinking, that particular low does not create much rain. So we can see that the rainfall totals in general here are going to be quite weak from this system unless you live north of it. So unlike normal Queensland systems where we see most of the rain to the south, you can see here the only rain to this system is really to the west and north. Now as it approaches the Queensland coastline here, we're looking at heavy falls of rain, uh, but only in the vicinity of the track and to the northwest of the track. So you can see further to the south here, areas around Townsville, Mackay, not expecting to see much rainfall from it at all. Whereas normally, if we had a system that would hit the coast around Cairns, we would expect to see deluges all up and down the coast here from Cairns all the way through to Mackay and possibly further south. Not expected to be the case with this one. The reasoning, of course, being that at the same time as this one's hitting, we've got something that's taking away the southeasterly flow from the state uh, that's coming towards southern parts of Queensland. So at the same time as that's going on, we've got another low here around the southeast corner, and you can see which one's creating which one's creating most of the weather, and it's not the one up here in the north part of Queensland. It's this one here. Now, what we can see here is that on the Friday, the European model has this system approaching the coast. Some very heavy rainfall totals here developing around the southeast corner. Um, and you can see here 24 hour totals of over 50 millimetres, getting 50 to 100 millimetres gen are the general totals here on the Friday morning from Thursday to Friday. And those totals only get stronger as we get into Friday. So we're looking here at over 100 millimetres for massive section of the coastline of the southeast corner of Queensland. And that's happening on Friday. Fairly similar type scenario predicted here by the GFS forecast model. So we have got fairly good agreement around the computer models here. We have a situation where the uh, landfall occurs uh, right around that Friday afternoon, Friday evening. We've got gale force winds associated with a trough system as well. So not only have you got the low pressure system hitting the coast, the big driver of a lot of this rain is a trough system that's going to be located just here on, the, on or just off the coast. As that trough system pushes west with the cyclone or with the low, we're going to see all of that rainfall whacking into the coastline as well. Not a uh, Friday to be out on the waters either. So we're looking at 30 to 35 knots possibly blowing in this area as that low pressure system heads towards the coast. So this is your Friday forecast. You can see here just general 25 to 30s with 30 to 35s. And these are sustained winds, obviously, with those squally showers and rain periods coming through. You're going to see gusts and gusts are going to be, you know, in the vicinity of 40 knots, 50 knots possibly. You know, so you could be, I would be very, very surprised if the Bureau don't issue a severe weather warning for this entire part of the coastline uh, as we get into the latter parts of the week. So here's the next four days. Remembering, of course, by day four, we're starting to look at that rainfall around the southeast corner. Now, the, day, the rainfall here off the northeast peninsula coastline is very dependent on the track of the tropical low in the Gulf. If it does what we expect it to do, and that's push to the west here and whack into the NT, we would expect that most of the most of this pink and purple here off the northeast coast of Queensland would be gone. There would be very little, a very little blue in this entire area. Most of it would be out here. So we're seeing the heaviest rainfall is expected to be out here. Now, also, as I mentioned, the southeast corner, not much else happening for Queensland outside of those regions, and also some thunderstorms for the Kimberley region as well, and possibly parts of the inland Pilbara and Gascoigne. As we go into the 20th to the 23rd, the overall consensus is that that tropical low or cyclone over the NT will push to the west, and so we'll start to see an increase in rainfall over the North Kimberley, um, and possibly that rainfall extending further to the west and south as that tropical low or cyclone redevelops off the coast, if it can get off the coast, or remains a low if it remains inland. Uh, further to the south, we can see continuation here of very heavy falls of rain in the southeast corner, extending to northeast New South Wales, associated with the tropical low that's going to hit the coast or get close to the coast, and the trough line associated with that. Over the eight days, eight day period, we could be seeing falls of up to half a metre here on the southeast corner. Now remember, that is very much dependent on the tropical low pushing west and hitting the coast, and then the trough associated with it lingering back and pushing and hitting the coast as well. So it's dependent on two things: the low and the trough. Now, if those two things don't happen and we only get a low, well, we can scale these back to about half of that. So we're looking more around the 200 millimetre mark. If both of them happen, 
which is what the computer models expect to see, uh, therefore, then we would see these falls of three to 500 millimetres possible in this area over the next week. Um, and if we see the alternative scenario, which is a stronger tropical cyclone, it should remain well off the coast. And if that happens, then we would see very little of this rain expected. You could basically give yourself a quarter of that, if not less. Um, so there is still a fair bit of disagreement uh, as to whether or not the system can hit the coast. But at the moment, the best track, best, best possible forecast that we've got is that the system will hit the Capricorni or Harvey Bay coastline between Thursday and Saturday and the trough associated with that system to the south is going to create a hell of a lot of rain for this area. And as I say, the best track forecast we got of this one is it's going to hit the NT. All right, folks, that's all we've got time for today. I'll update you again tomorrow. It could be a very busy day at OCC as we decide whether, we're not go whether, we're, whether or not we're going to be chasing either one or both of these systems. We should have an answer by tonight. Remember, if you want more details about what we've talked about today, head over to OCC, become an OCC subscriber. You'll get a live and interactive look at us chasing a tropical cyclone if we do decide to chase a tropical cyclone in the next couple of days. Not only that, you'll get a lot more information about these different scenarios and the expectations weather-wise from them. Cheers for watching. We'll talk again tomorrow. I think it's important now that we update daily, so we'll have video updates daily. Keep checking our Facebook for further updates through the day.